Welcome to The Pivot Point, stories of courage, resilience, and reinvention. I'm your host, Jessica McGann, coach, producer, and creative, whose mission is to normalize the human experience, ignite the soul, and move you from feeling limited to limitless. Stories connect us, and my hope is that within this series, you will find at least one story that resonates with you on a deep personal level, one that speaks to your soul or your current situation that will motivate you to keep moving forward, inspire you to make bold, brave choices in your own life, and help you feel less alone in the process. In this episode, I speak with Teresa Williams. See, Teresa was once upon a time living that picture-perfect life husband who was well-regarded in their community, a couple kids, a house, and a thriving career herself as a licensed professional counselor and certified professional life coach. All seemed well until a little voice in her head told her something wasn't right. When she became suspicious that her then husband was having an affair, she knew exactly what to do. Teresa brings to the pivot point, not only her story, but also her expertise as a licensed professional counselor and certified professional life coach with a master of science in mental health counseling. Today, Teresa helps women find clarity, confidence, and balance in everyday living with compassion and understanding. She helps women rediscover their passion and purpose in life. She is a therapist, coach, conference speaker, and podcast host who enjoys reading a good book, taking a hike, and listening to live music, playing with her dog, Ollie, and traveling with her husband. Teresa has an incredible journey to share with us today. So without further ado, let's dive in. Teresa, and welcome to The Pivot Point. Thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Um, I, in reading your submission for this episode, I was really drawn to your story of uh, betrayal and healing from divorce and how you move forward in your transformation. I think this story is going to help a lot of people because as you know, divorce happens all the time. And so does, unfortunately, affairs. So maybe before we get into your story, you could tell us a little bit about what your life looked like and felt like before you learned of your partner's affairs. Well, I was a very happily married uh, wife for a hundred years. No, not really. It (laughs) felt like that for a very long time with children and uh, a thriving therapy practice and living life life to the fullest. I mean, I was a happy little trooper. Everything was good. Life was grand. Right. Absolutely. So what happened? Well, so I am a speaker and I was asked to speak at a women's conference in Texas. And on the front end of that, I was doing uh, teaching and training for other therapists for continuing education on the front end. And so I was going to be gone for the whole week and no problem. And before this though, I kept sensing something in my spirit was not right with my husband and I, and and women do have the intuition. We do. And, you know, I tell women in my therapy practice, pay attention because 99.9, it's usually correct. So, you know, I want to pause you. Yeah. I want to just pause you there for a second, because I love that of like, I've, I've experienced affairs in my own life and in my body before my mind could consciously understand, I felt something was off and wrong. And I, and there was no evidence. Like he treated me well and, and we were having regular sex and everything seemed good, but there was this anxiety. How would you describe what that felt like in your body if you had to dig a little bit deeper into those words? I would say an unsettledness, kind of a little anxiousness. You know, I carry my uh, stress in my shoulder. So when I do up like this, it's like, oh, wait a minute. I shouldn't do that at home, right? I should be relaxed and open and just kind of new. And so again, kind of like you, having regular sex, we were getting along, no issues, but something just was off. And so I went to him and I said, are we okay? And he said, oh yeah, I love you. We're fine. And I'm going, okay. 
And this was probably about a month before um, I was going to travel to speak. Mm -hmm. And so again, nothing seemed right. And right before I got ready to leave, I said, are you having an affair? <gasps> and he went, no, no, I love you. I'm committed to you. No, no. And I went, you do, you do know what I do for a living, right? <laughs> oh. Do you, do you even know where those words came from? Like out of all the issues, like you knew there was a sense inside of you that, that's, that there was a voice that said affair out of every kind of issue you could possibly be having. And were you, were you surprised that that came out of your mouth at the moment or were you? Yes, yes and no, because, you know, I, I want to preface it this. Anybody is capable of having an affair. They are Absolutely. given the right set of circumstances, place things we're all capable um so you know for me and what I do it's commonplace and my husband um was a very or still is a very prominent person in our town and what he does for a living that's kind of the norm so I'll just leave it at that <laughs> say no so, more right so you said are you having an affair and he said no honey all is good oh right he said, no, I love you, yada, 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 yada. So, okay. So in my therapy practice, I suggest that if you want to know, if you think your spouse is having an affair, there's a sure way to find out. Hire a private investigator. They're not that expensive. You will know yes or no, one way or another, right up front. So I got on the airplane Sunday night. And everything at home looked fine and great. He kissed me goodbye, be safe, yada, yada. Even when I checked into the hotel that night, the uh, private investigator was already sending me photos. She has was at my house Sunday night. So, okay, all right, we're thinking, right, it's a just a overnight thing, even though it was at my house. So Monday morning, I get up. I have to, we start at eight o'clock, um, teaching and I take a break and my phone is blowing up. I'm getting pictures and videos. Okay. She spent the night at my house. As the week progressed, she stayed the whole week at my house. She put her clothes in my drawers. She hung her clothes in my closet. He even let her drive my car. What? And you're yes. seeing these photos. A, fl a plane ride away. You're not even close. Yeah. Are you communicating with him at all during this time? Like through like t through text message or phone calls? There's no communication with you two throughout this week. No. Now, I take that back. He might have texted um, earlier in the week. I think he, well, no, I take that back. He texted me to see if I had gotten, um, you know, they're okay. And that was kind of it. I think maybe one time during the week, how's it going? And, you know, I said, fine. And that was it. So what were you experiencing physically and emotionally and mentally during this week, knowing that that was happening now? Well, first of all, again, anybody is capable of having an affair. Would yeah. you have would I have said that this man would have done what he did? Oh, absolutely not. I would have said, no way. It was violation to the um degree. It was everything that I held sacred was now discarded. And I, first of all, I was in shock. Yeah, I was heartbroken. Uh, I didn't ever think I would stop crying. I had to pull myself together to be able to work. So, you know, still all week, continued pictures and videos. They were, um, at that point, they were out in public. And it was like shock, heartache, just could not believe that my house, my sacred place was now violated to that degree your whole world just was swept out from under your feet. Yes. Gone in a heartbeat. Gone. I'm sure there's a lot of listeners who are listening right now who are like, I would have called him and I would have ripped him a new one. <laughs> what did you do? How, well, how did you decide how to confront this affair? 
Well, so I have a good friend who's an attorney on Wednesday after I could have the videos that she's walking around in my house and we'll just say for imagination purposes, what she's walking around in. Um, I called my friend and said, Hey, this is what's going on. Please draw up the papers. And she said, okay. And so, um, I really wanted to, uh, go home, chop them up in little pieces and feed them to the sharks <laughs> and sit and eat popcorn and watch. Now, just so your listeners know, I did not act on that, nor would I, but the anger and the hurt certainly was there. So I flew back home on Sunday. I had a girlfriend pick me up from the airport. I moved to the other side of the house. Um, he thought I was mad because he forgot to call me one night. Okay. So, all right. Got up the next day, went to work, and just like nothing happened. Um, on Wednesday, my attorney called and says, hey, your papers are ready. Would you like to have him served or would you like to talk to him? What would you like to do? And I went, no. I think I'll talk to him. I think I will. Well, let me ask him what he wants. And she says, are you okay? And I went, yep, yeah, I'm good. So I got home that evening about seven o'clock. And the irony of this, he was in bed reading his Bible of oh. things. So. Wow. Okay. Perfect moment. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's like, well, wow, okay. Apparently you, you missed some, some scriptures in there somewhere. Uh, so I walked over to the side of the bed and I just said, Hey, I know what you've done. And he said, well, I don't know what you're talking about. And I said, I know you've had an affair and I know who it is with. And he said, you're crazy. You're just batshit crazy. And Isn't that I, what they all just go to right away? You're crazy. Oh, you're crazy. You're, you're insane. You're so dramatic. Right. And I said, no, let me just tell you that she stayed in my house all week and this is who she is. And just so I forgot to tell you this part, uh, just for the cherry on top, no pun intended here, she is 20 years younger and she is his employee. So, yeah. All so, the stereotypes, all of the, exactly, like, exactly. <laughs> Could you be any more stereotypical, sir? Right. And so he looks at me, I mean, the the look on his face when I said her name and that I knew that she had stayed a week was priceless. And he jumps up and he starts yelling and cussing and screaming and takes off, you know, and I'd already planned to spend the night with um, a girlfriend. So I had a bag packed and, you know. Are your children at home during this time or were they old enough no. to have been out no. of the house? No, they were out of the house at that point. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure that was helpful to not have to worry about at least the children during that time. Um, yes. He left? Like he got mad at you and he left? Yes, yes. wonder yeah. where he went. I don't know, huh? Mm -hmm. So- how did you even begin to start telling friends and family? Did you, I have something very similar to this experience and I kept it very, very close to me, partially because I was concerned about his well being still, and partially because I had shame around it. And I'm wondering what that process of, especially because you were married for 25 years, a younger woman, his employee, how did you begin to open up and, and start telling friends and family about this? Well, I had a lot of shame and embarrassment because he was a very prominent person and it was a very public affair. In fact, he had gone, uh, We I was still married to him and living on the other side of the house. And he went to his partner's uh, son's wedding with her arm in arm as a couple. And so tried to at that point we we were going to church and reached out to our church didn't get support um in fact got criticism um and and I and I say this because one of the 
people in our small group came up to me and said, what did you do to cause him to have an affair? What? Hold pause. We're still saying that to people? That is, that that mindset needs to go way, way, way away, way away. Yeah. How did you receive that? How did that, when that person said that to you? Well, I was taken back. Yeah. Um, and I said, well, you know what? I, I, this was his choice. I didn't do anything. And, mm. and I want to let the listeners know, because that's something that a lot of men will say, well, if you would have given me more sex, if you'd have been nicer to me, if you would have, could have, should have, if you'd have done all this, yeah. I would have had the affair. I didn't do anything to cause him to have an affair. That was his choice. That's all on him. 1,000%. Uh, all- and yes. I want to add to that too, because I remember the moment I, I, I realized that it wasn't our fault for getting cheated yes. on. And, and I also want to say like men and women can both cheat, as you said, like exactly. everyone can do this. Um, but when I started seeing these women in my life who I admired so much, who I genuinely thought were the most, or, and still think are so gorgeous and talented and smart and their partners were cheating on them. And I was just like, oh no, no, no. This has nothing to do with us, what we look like, who we are. It has everything to do with what's happening internally for the betrayer. Absolutely. And you seem to have known that maybe because of your work and your training already served you really well in that moment, perhaps. Well, yeah, because not knowing. Yeah, because that's a typical response. And I know now I was not a perfect wife, nor was he a perfect husband. There is no such thing. There's no such thing as a person, perfect human. (laughs) Exactly. And so, you know, when I was told that it, you know, it hurt, it stung. I cried all the way home from church. And so I want to say that I did find another church that was loving and accepting, but you know how that I dealt with it was I knew who I was. And I did my own work. I had my own therapist and I processed through the grief. You took time to sit with those painful emotions, to work your way through them, to feel them out and process them. What tools other than therapy, or maybe they're tools that you learned in therapy Um, or things that you found in your own journey that really helped support you on this healing journey? Well, I think besides being a therapist and getting my own therapist and doing my work, you know, I had a one good friend that sat with me and allowed me to vent and cry and be angry and didn't offer advice. Except for one thing she did was offer me, the, you know, the third box of tissues <laughs> because all <laughs> I did was cry then. But friend, a friend was so helpful. And uh, the other thing was, and I, and I tell my clients this, is either if you don't have a friend, get a pet, borrow a pet. Because at that time I had a pug named Sam. <laughs> And he's, he was adorable and he would snuggle with me and he would let me cry. And oh. it was precious. Dogs are the best. They're so emotionally intelligent. They are. They're so brilliant. And I'm so happy that you had a friend who was so emotionally intelligent to know that you didn't need to be fixed in that right. moment. You just needed a safe space. That's, I hope anyone listening who knows someone who's going through something difficult knows that you don't have to fix the person. You can just sit and hold that space for them to process and just be there. Um, what were some of the, I just want to kind of go back a little bit to that mindset that you were in, because I know it can be a dark place for people of like my, my whole life is over. Can you tell me maybe some of those beliefs that you were having in that moment so that anyone who may be feeling a similar way can know that it's just a part of the healing journey. Yeah, because one of the things that my ex-husband would scream at me, I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to destroy your practice. Um, you're going to be destitute. Uh, you're not going to have anything. You're not going to As be- As if he hadn't practice. done enough, 
Like he wasn't right. sorry. He was like, I'm going to ruin you further. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. He, he was, he was angry that he got caught basically. Yeah. And oh. so those are some of the things, you know, and it's like, well, wait a minute, you know, maybe, maybe he's got enough clout that he, he, he can destroy my practice and maybe I'm not good enough. And he would scream all kinds of stuff at me and cuts at me. And it really took a toll on my self-esteem. I mean, especially, let me think about this. You got this 20 year old that's younger, that's, yeah. you know, got this buff bod and, you know, seems to have it all together. And, you know, here I am. And he's just telling me how terrible I am. And it, it really made me question me like, well, I know I didn't cause the affair, but now that we're going through this divorce and, you know, we were divorced less than three months, uh, which was really quick. Because Congratulations. He, well, yeah, he didn't want the pictures and the videos out. And yet he still used the manipulation and the verbal abuse to attack and it was a dark time and it made me feel like, well, am I, am I going to be okay? Is there anybody that's going to love me? You know, am I damaged goods? Maybe I am. Damaged and, goods. I just want to pause yes. on that because that yes. is something I, I can't speak for men, but I can speak for a lot of women that I've sat with through this. And that is a thing that we, we feel like, like we're damaged good where does that come from well I think it comes from the rejection it took me a long time to figure that one out because you know when someone has an affair basically they're rejecting you and they're saying you're not good enough or you don't meet my standards so that makes us take on the the feeling that we're damaged goods and in reality we're not in any way shape or form and I think that to be able to get out of that is to be able to set and look at all the good and look at who I am. And it's not about accomplishments or titles. It has nothing to do with that. You know, I'm a wife, I'm a mother, I'm a therapist, I'm a coach, I'm an aunt, I'm a friend. Those are just titles, but there's not who I am. You know, hey, I like chocolate ice cream, you know? I, I love a good burger. You know, I love to pay pickleball. There's all kinds of things about me. That's who I am. And I also am knowledgeable. I have good character. You know, I'm beautiful inside and out. That's who I am. Yes, I'm not Teresa. Idol. Yeah. So that's, that's where you overcome the damaged goods, all of the negative that's been thrown at you. It sounds like you really dug deep into who am I? And you found the words and you chose who you were. You, cause Absolutely. you get to choose. And we're not just the labels of what we contribute to society. It's exactly. as simple as I'm a person that likes ice cream. I like my long walks with my dog. That's a part of our identity. Exactly. It sounds like this was almost the part, like a large part of your healing journey was falling in love with yourself and getting to know who you were outside of this marriage. Is that fair to say? It is. And, a, and I hear a lot in my practice of women who are so afraid of being alone and they are so afraid of the future and what it's going to hold. You know, again, I'm not going to find totally. somebody. I'm not going to be loved. You know, I don't want to be alone. But you know what? It's a great opportunity for growth and to find you and to find new things that you like to do that you never got to do because mm -hmm. you were married to this person over here. And now yeah. you get to go to the Mexican restaurant four times a week if you want to go. You get to leave yeah. your shoes, you know, in the floor if you want to. Or wait a minute. Let's talk ladies. We get to buy six pairs of shoes if we want to. <laughs> and we get the whole closet to ourselves. <laughs> yes. Amen, sister. Yes. I love it. When uh, One thing I like to point out to people, and this is a thought that I, I hold to myself when I'm going through a change in a relationship or something is you get to have a first kiss again. Oh, like yeah. You get to fall in love again. 
Like when you're in a long-term relationship, you kind of that, that excitement and that, like that, I need to talk and touch and be with that person at all time that fades and you enter a state of security, but you get to do that again. You get to experience that intense falling in love moment and get that first kiss again. And that's something to look forward to, too. Um, how has this betrayal and this pivotal moment changed your life for the better? Well, when I went through all of this, I walked through it pretty much alone, other than, you know, a couple of friends and my own therapist. There wasn't anything out there that really helped women learn how to heal and grow beyond divorce. And so one of the things that I have done in a healing moment is to be able to create a program that helps women who either are going through a divorce or divorce find hope and healing beyond divorce. And the program is called uh, The Divorced Resilient Woman Finding You or Reclaiming You. And it is not a bitch session to where that we bash our exes. It is not a woe is me. Yes, I want to hear your story and I want to come alongside you and support you. But it's about growth. It's about taking the things that we didn't learn and making them into a future focus so that we can grow and become resilient. And that's what it's about. It's not being, I'm really passionate about not staying in the past. I cannot change what happened to me. There's no way. And I don't want to change it because it's helped me develop into who I am today. And I want to help other women go, hey, wait a minute. I can make it. I can have a great life beyond divorce. And that means being resilient and growth. And that means future focused, not past. And in the program, we talk about understanding boundaries, what they are, what they're not. The difference between being assertive and aggressive, what the grief process is and what it's not and how to walk through it. So we really help women to learn how to become resilient after divorce. Teresa, your energy as you speak about your program, like I can just tell how aligned and passionate you are about helping other women navigate this period of time. And for all the listeners, I'm going to have all of Teresa's links in the show description below. I'm going to make it as easy as possible for you guys to find Teresa so that if you are navigating something like this, you can reach out to her. I mean, with your all your training as a coach and a therapist, plus your actual experience going through this, I can imagine you help so many women and you will continue to help so many women. So thank you so much for coming on and speaking to me and sharing your story. And before we end this call, what do you hope the listeners take away from your story today? I want them to hear that divorce is not the end. It's not going to destroy you that you can move forward and find hope and healing and you can grow and you can become the best version of you. And that's what I want them to take away because it's possible because I've walked it. Heck yeah. Amen. Thank you so much, Teresa. I've really enjoyed this conversation. Me too. Thank you so much. If you enjoyed today's episode, please consider liking, subscribing, and letting us know your thoughts in the comments below. It truly means the world to me to hear from you. New episodes will be available every Saturday, both on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. And if you would like to learn more about my work as a coach, today's guest, or have a story that you would like to share on The Pivot Point, check out the episode description for more information. Now time for the legal stuff. This podcast is presented to you solely for educational and entertainment purposes. I may be a professionally certified coach myself, but hosting a podcast is not coaching. This podcast should not be used in substitution of working with a licensed therapist, doctor, coach, or other qualified professionals. Copy that? Amazing. See you on the next episode. Nothing but love, Jess.